Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and this time we're going to talk about the new Z6 and Z7 version 2 cameras. I purchased each camera within a day or two of the stores, getting them on their shelves, so I've had lots of time to take them out and put them through their paces. In this case, I kept my shooting local and have knocked out nearly 7,000 frames between the two cameras while exploring and photographing the wildlife in my local area. Also, before we get too far, I do want to remind you that I am not sponsored or affiliated with Nikon in any way. They don't give or loan me gear, and I receive no compensation from them in any way, shape, or form. Also, I want to give you a realistic expectation here. This video isn't a full field review like some of my others. There are tons of reviews out there already for these two cameras that cover all the tech specs. Plus, these cameras are like 80% of the original, I guess, Mark I cameras, so you probably have a pretty good idea of what we're dealing with here. Instead, I'm going to talk about how I've been using the improved features of these bodies with my wildlife photography and what that experience has been like. In short, I'm using this video to try to answer the simple question, are the Z6 and Z7 II good enough for wildlife photography? Now, spoiler alert, the short answer is a qualified yes. These cameras seem to sit in what will likely be the middle of Nikon Z series lineup. They aren't the best at anything and they aren't the worst at it either. They offer a nice balance of price, output, and performance. Put another way, if these were like DSLRs, I'd put them in like the D750 or D780 category, a solid, versatile, all around, general purpose camera. As you probably know, this was not my opinion when the Z6 and Z7 first hit the market. My field experience with those early cameras and the initial 1.0 firmware was far from satisfactory. Heck, even as the firmware updates came and things became better, for me, those original Zs were just kind of an okay choice for wildlife. Now these second gen cameras are noticeably better, so let's talk about the differences. First. And it's minor, but I'm glad to see the dual card slots. I keep an extra SD card in there for those times I think I have enough memory and get out on a prolonged shoot and don't have an extra card in my pocket. In addition, the startup time on the new cameras is notable. They are much faster to boot up than the first versions and even faster than my A9 II. One serious complaint wildlife photographers had with the Z cameras and honestly many other mirrorless cameras is that when you turn the camera along, it takes it too long before you can actually start shooting. The Z cameras have addressed this really well. In fact, I used to have my standby timer set for like 10 minutes or so with the first Z cameras because I was missing too many shots when the camera went into standby and I had to wait for it to turn back on. While these cameras aren't quite as fast as a DSLR for startup, they are quick enough that it's not been a major issue, at least so far in my shooting. I'm also a fan of the new grip. One of my biggest gripes with the first versions was the absence of that vertical grip, or at least one with controls. As wildlife photographers, we often find ourselves waiting for prolonged periods for an animal to actually turn our way. If the composition demands a vertical approach, it gets uncomfortable holding the camera with your finger on the release and your arm at your head level like this kind of flailing around for extended periods of time. The grip makes it much easier to survive those extended weights. In addition, it just makes shooting verticals more stable overall. You know, the thing is, it's really comfortable to hold and the control placement is great. And honestly, I think they did a great job with this one. I also like how the battery compartment works on the grip. One lever releases just a single battery for a quick swap, even with the camera running, and the other lets you take out both batteries at once. As for battery life, it really depends. During one active shoot that started with a full battery, I got about 1,800 shots, and the camera was still showing that I had like a 50% charge left. Now, on the other hand, during some slower winter afternoons, I ran dry at about 1,000 shots. It really comes down to how much you use the EVF, how much you're reviewing your images, using the menu, that sort of thing, and you know how quickly ice forms on your beard since these batteries are affected a little bit by the cold. This is one place where the extra capacity of that battery grip is very welcome. The buffer is really up to par for wildlife in both cameras now. Here's a slide with my buffer experience. As you can see, Nikon blew right past adequate and went straight to impressive. I know for me, there's very little chance I'd ever run into that buffer in either camera. In fact, the Z7 Mark II buffer actually exceeds the D850 buffer by a comfortable margin. Plus, with the CF Express card installed, it doesn't take long to clear the buffer out once it gets full and get back to shooting. Nikon also claims the blackout time has been reduced, and although that may be true, it still seems to last longer than I'd like. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a deal breaker in any sense of the word, it's just that in the field, the more time you have looking at the target and not a black screen, the better. 
Frame rate is another area that saw a minor improvement, but still remains a little disappointing. It's not that I find 10 or 14 frames per second too slow, it's the implementation. When you use the continuous high extended mode, the camera goes into slideshow mode as you shoot, showing you the image you just shot rather than the live feed. Now for stationary action, like a bird on a perch flapping its wings, for example, that's fine. It also works okay for slower flying birds. However, as you get to faster and faster subjects, it becomes progressively more difficult to keep the AF area where you want it on the target since all you see in the viewfinder is your last shot. In addition, Nikon must have worn out the asterisk key when typing up the specs. To get the full extended frame rate, you have to use the mechanical shutter, you have to drop to 12-bit, and you have to stick with single point AF. What's frustrating to me is that if you're shooting a high frame rate, it's probably because you're shooting action, right? Makes sense. Just when you need things like a live viewfinder feed and larger AF areas, they get deleted from the equation. Sadly, to get a live feed in the viewfinder as you shoot, you have to drop to normal continuous high, and that tops out at a relatively lethargic 5.5 frames per second. This is where I wish we saw some improvement. Something like eight frames a second with a live feed would have been a welcome improvement here, but it just wasn't there. So what about autofocus? Before we jump in, if you're a Z series shooter, you know the AF systems on these cameras have a little bit of a learning curve to them. If you wanna make that learning curve exceptionally shorter, make sure you check out my ebook, Secrets to Exposure and Metering for Nikon, the mirrorless edition. It'll have you running the Z series AF system like a pro in no time. So let's talk about the AF system. First, for static subjects, it's exceptional and really incredibly accurate. If the camera has a lock on a static subject, it's just plain sharp. I saw this again and again with an incredible, almost non-existent failure rate, and I suspect that the few times my static subjects weren't sharp was probably a problem four inches behind the viewfinder, not the camera. For action, it still did fairly well, about what I would expect for maybe like a D750 or D780. Wasn't perfect, but I was happy with the keeper rate with the normal AF areas. My favorite is still wide small for action. You might want to take a note on that one. It works great. It's the perfect size for tracking, and I seldom had an issue with it. While I wouldn't put the Z6 or Z72 in the same AF action league as like a D850, D500, or D5 or D6, it's still a very capable camera. I think this AF improvement may largely be a result of the dual processor setup. In the past with the old Z cameras, I would disable apply settings to live view in the custom setting menu and I noticed an improvement in AF performance. Now I saw no need to do that with these new version 2 cameras and I noticed no difference in AF performance when I tested it on some flight shots. Now I'm going to reserve the right to change my mind about this as I try it with other subjects, but right now everything seems to work really, really well with that setting turned on. Where I was disappointed was with the actual tracking mode. I had hoped to see an improvement here, but it doesn't seem to work any better than what we had on the first versions of these cameras. I had used it for tracking seagulls and other waiting birds, and you know, it seemed like it was getting paid to drop the target. Time and again, the tracking system would see something in the background and jump to it. Heck, I mean, there were times it would jump to a cloud instead of staying with the bird. My hope is that Nikon updates this feature. I have a feeling the camera has the processing power to do more, and maybe this is just more of a firmware update issue. As for AF speed with the FTZ adapter, it's about the same as the original Z cameras. Very generally speaking, most adapted F-mount lenses are going to take about twice as long to run the range of the focus ring as they would do on a dedicated F-mount camera. Here's the 600mm on the D850 versus the Z62. As you can see, it's noticeably slower. When we move to the 200-500, to 500, the speeds are neck and neck. I think that's largely because both cameras are capable of more speed than the 200-500 to 500 is. For the 500 PF, once again, the D850 is about twice as fast. However, it's important to note that by and large, this isn't a big problem unless you really are running the focus range of the lens all the time. Getting the focus distance close in the field before you actually engage autofocus can help overcome this quite a bit and the improved accuracy of the AF system means there's less hunting than we had with the first versions of the cameras. So what's the verdict? Well, the new Z6 and Z7 II are capable wildlife cameras. Again, they're not the best in the world and they're not the worst. They can comfortably get the job done in most 
circumstances. As we mentioned, I think it's also important to take these cameras in the context of where they sit in the lineup. It's easy to say that the Z7 II is the top of the line Nikon Z camera and put it against Sony and Canon's best. But I think the truth is, I don't think that the Z6 and Z7 series are meant to compete at that level. I suspect we'll see proper high-end competitors from Nikon in the future that will go head-to-head -head with those higher-end bodies from Canon and Sony. I tend to recommend these cameras for people who do general wildlife where action isn't the mainstay. Now don't get me wrong, these new cameras can absolutely do action, but cameras like the D5, D6, D500, D850, they tend to net a higher keeper rate. At the same time, I really love my Z cameras and especially the 500PF for hiking and kayaking while I'm searching for wildlife. I love that I have AF all over the viewfinder and frankly, that has made the small birds you've seen in this review 100% easier. I shoot them at very close range and they are always falling outside the AF field on my full frame DSLRs. So I'm going to say I'm a happy Z camera owner. Personally, I think if you have a higher end DSLR, it's not a bad idea to add one of these to your kit. I don't know that I'd replace something like, again, a D5, D6, D850, or D500 with one of these, but adding one to your kit gives you the best of both worlds. As we like to say, use the best tool for the job. As for which camera, the Z6 or Z7 II, it really comes down to priorities. If low light and faster extended frame rates are the most important thing, and you can usually fill the frame, the Z6 II is the way to go. If croppability or big prints sound more like what's in your wheelhouse, then the Z7 II is the best choice. If you've enjoyed this video and have a Nikon Z series camera, make sure you do check out my ebook, Secrets to the Nikon Autofocus System Mirrorless Edition. It is jam packed with advice, techniques, and tips that will give you a much better experience with your Z series camera, all written in a casual way that's easy to understand and follow along. Finally, make sure you sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss a video, a live stream, a workshop, an article, or a new book. Also, if you have a photography question or just want to have a fun place to show off your photos, check out the BCG forums, and you know what? I can't wait to see you there. Finally, make sure you like, subscribe, and get notified. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.